Hall of Fame class will be announced. Tim Duncan, Kevin Garnett, anything is possible. <laughs> of course, it'll be emotional. Kobe Bryant's family. It's not official, but let's just say I like their chances. All three. The Miller Lite moment is brought to you by Miller Lite. Here's to the original light beer with great taste and only 96 calories. So several days after Ed Orgeron said there would be a college football season, the guy he defeated in the title game has agreed. Clemson set to face Georgia Tech September 3rd. That's five months from Friday. The spring game scheduled for Saturday. Obviously, that's not happening. But Dabo rather defiantly and emphatically is saying the regular season, oh, that, it's on. Let's get to work and let's let's go play. Uh, that's the best case scenario, and I I, I think that's what's going to happen. I don't I don't have any doubt. I mean, this is America, man. I mean, we I mean, we've stormed the beaches of Normandy. We've sent people. To, we've sent a, a a car and drove around on Mars. We've walked on the moon. We 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 this this is the greatest country and the greatest people in the history of the planet. We created an iPhone that can send a I can sit here and talk to all you people in all these different places. We got the smartest people in the world. Uh, listen, we're gonna rise up and, and we're gonna we're gonna kick this thing right in the teeth, and we'll get back to to our lives. Opening weekend, in addition to Clemson and Georgia Tech, there's a good chance Steve might be at one of these games. Looking good. Notre Dame and Navy from Dublin, Ireland, by the way. But if you've heard Kirk Herbstreit's comments. Doesn't feel like college game day is going to be there. He is not very bullish on this season happening at all, Steve. Mel Kiper Jr., his latest top 10 pick looks something like this. He's got three quarterbacks going in the top six. Of course, Joe Burrow at number one. He's got two at five. Justin Herbert going six to the Chargers. Could be a run on offensive tackles as well. It is a stacked top of that first round here now the man behind that top 10 here's Mel Kuyper Jr. joining us and uh, Mel you have Tua at five to Miami that's been pretty consistent as I recall Rex yes. Ryan mm -hmm. said on get up he said that drafting Tua I think he meant anywhere in the first round but definitely <laughs> at five would mm -hmm. be the biggest gamble in NFL draft history and you say what to that I think he's got a point, Rex does, because you think about the injury factor with three, maybe four, but three that we are always talking about, the two ankles and the and the hips are three lower extremity injuries, Steve. And I think you look at the durability, which we won't know. That's the great unknown. He can be ready to roll, but then is he going to hold up against NFL pressure defenses and all the guys that can get after you from a sack standpoint and be able to play down after down, play after play, and be there from game one to game 16 or there before even a couple games down the road from that, you hope. So I think when you look at uh, the durability factor, that's the question mark, Steve, more so than anything. That's why Rex made that point, because if you're taking him by trading up, if you're going ahead of Miami to get him and you're giving up draft picks, that's the gamble. That's the risk. If you stay where you are and your Miami just take them, then the risk-reward factors in because without the injury, he wouldn't have been there at five for them to take without having to give up multiple draft picks. Uh, no health issues where it comes to Justin Herbert of Oregon fame. How does he sort of tie into all of this with Tua at five to Miami? Yeah, I think contrary to what people may be thinking, there is a guy like Herbert who has done a great job late in the season, senior bowl week practices, game, you think about Pro Day, Combine, all that. The kid's got a lot of talent. You can't deny that. He's a tremendous kid. He's super intelligent. There's talk out there that some teams really like Herbert. You've been hearing that. He's got momentum going. Uh, you say, how does he have momentum? Because he finished the process strong. And he's clean when you come up to this unknown about how we're going to deal with the draft without any of these medical rechecks and all this testing and pro days and all that. He's clean. And that's why Justin Herbert is going to be very interesting to see if he, in fact, goes ahead of Tua come April 23rd. Uh, Mel, we are inside of three weeks from the first round of the upcoming NFL draft. Uh, are you good with the NFL staying on its calendar and, and having the draft when it's scheduled? 
I am, Steve, because if you push it back, you push it back. Does anything change? This is a TV event. Ironically, you talk about medical rechecks and all the testing and pro days that they didn't benefit from back in 1971 and 1974. Pittsburgh Steelers had arguably the two best drafts in NFL history, and they drafted guys from small colleges, Ernie Holmes, Dwight White, Frank Lewis, and others, and they didn't have all this technology and all these rechecks and all the things you do up until late April. They were drafted early. There were 17 rounds, and they got the job done. So I think uh, it'll all be be work out fine. There's a lot more important things going on in the world than what happens in the NFL and the, with the draft. And I think for people now to have some sense of normalcy, some will escape beyond everything so negative, uh, which is what's going on right now for obvious reasons. I think it's a good thing to have if you can pull it off. And it looks like the NFL will be able to do that, hopefully. Thoughts from Mel Kuyper Jr. Mel, you be well, okay? You too, Steve. Take care, pal. Mel will be starring in our coverage. 41st straight year, the NFL draft is on ESPN. Look, we don't know where it's going to be held. It might be held in Mel's house, for all we know. <laughs> also on the NFL Network, the College Game Day crew will be on ABC again this year, covering it from the college perspective. April 23rd, can't get here soon enough. Back to the 2K tournament. If you're new to this, $100,000. Charitable donation, coronavirus charities to the winner. All the big NBA stars taking part. DeAndre Ayton, Zach Levine. This is a 7-10 matchup. we got 16 total players. Steve, they both came in with the exact same rating, yet Levine is the seventh seed. I'm not going to spark any controversy here. We're just trying to play virtual hoops. Who took the Knicks? <laughs> Hopefully nobody. <laughs> Where are the Knicks? In the third. Russell Westbrook from downtown. That seems fair enough because he's kind of taken over from Harden and become the big force for the Rockets. We'll move ahead to the fourth quarter. Aiton and company up 50-39, asking during a timeout to Levine about the dunk contest. I'm done with the dunk contest, man. Yeah, hey, you got back to back? I ain't have anything else to prove, bro. Like, the only thing that I didn't get to show was that 360 from the free throw line. But <laughs> that's what I was just... 360 from the free throw I, line. That's, hey, man, I made it once or twice, but that's about it. What? That doesn't even sound normal, bro. <laughs> I will say, Levine is one of those players that's probably better in real life dunking than in a video game, which is not really the case for most people. Aiton and company win 57-41. We're back at it. ESPN, ESPN2, the NBA social channels on Sunday for more 2K. Social distancing themselves from others, but not from social media. All the interesting ways that... Your favorite athletes are staying in shape. Next, 